So hi and welcome to the second part of this uh, Gazebo plugin answer. So in this second part, we're going to talk about how to go further with the plugins and how to create your own plugins that are connected to ROS in certain ways and also how to create your model uh, plugins. So plugins that are related to models. Yeah. So let's, let's go to it. So before we start, um, if you have any doubts whatsoever about the things that we're talking about, please have a look at Robot Ignite Academy, where we have courses about ROS related topics on basic stuff and more advanced stuff. So anything that you didn't understand in this tutorial, please have a look at Robot Ignite Academy. You, and you learn about from experience and hands-on experience on uh, simulations that don't need any installation. So have a look. So without further ado, let's get started. So remember that the code I'll post it here in the Git. So if you have any doubts or whatever, you also can download it from there or from the project. Yeah. So let's have a look at the code. So we created uh, the simple world, very simple, easy. Now, a more complex one would be, okay, uh, what if I want to, uh, that's it, yeah. Okay, so what if I don't want to do a world plugin, but a model plugin? So this is an example. We have the model push, which is here. So the model push is basically um, a plugin that what it does is you connect it to uh, a model in particular and it moves it, it pushes it in one direction basically. In this case, it pushes the model in the X axis, in the X direction with a speed of 0 0.3, that's it. There's no interactivity, there's nothing. It's just the plugin that does that. Hmm? So how do we compile it? Well, you just have to copy this file. Then you have to go to the CMake list and add the compilation. So in this case, let's have a look what I did because I've already done it. And you just have to add the name of the model, which will uh, the, the name of the C++ file, which is model push C++, then the name of the plugin that you want it to have. So in this case, we'll put tutorial. Yeah. And you have to put name here again. And yeah, that's it. So now we compile it. If you want to, in the examples of the web pages that I linked in the description below, they don't use uh, ROS messages. It's good to know, especially to notify you that the, the plugin has been loaded and to which model is linked. Yeah. So let's can, can make, oops, sorry, make. Okay, let's check that in the data lib we have something. Oh, there, there we go. Lib tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we need a launch file, which is this one, which is essentially loading this world. That's it. So we need this world, the push world we go and in the push world we have to change the name which is this one whoops sorry there we 
go. There we go. And this without the tutorial. Okay. So I think we are done. So now we are going to launch. So let's source and set up flash and wash launch. Um, I think I've left this. I have to change it. There we go. Be careful with the copy paste. They're bad, bad friends. Example. Then we have main model push. And there we go. Okay, you see it loaded and it's linked to the box. So now we go to the gazebo. In your local computer, it will just pop up the gazebo client. In this case, you have to open the gazebo client. Yeah, and there we go. So we have a cube that it's pushed in the X direction. Great, yeah. So what then? So the next logical step is, okay, I want to change the direction uh, through ROS and have it published and I don't know, this kind of stuff. So what I've done is a more complex example that we're going to go through it, which is uh, earthquake plugin sim um, uh, plug yeah, basically that simulates an earthquake. It's the first version, so there's only movement in X axis, but uh, you can improve it and put in the three dimensions. So don't worry about that. So we're going to go through it a bit. So essentially, you'll have to do the same thing in what CMake list is concerned. So we're going to go directly to the uh, package that I've, I've already done. So the first thing is the earthquake C++. As you can see, it's quite lengthy, but we're going to go step by step and see how it's done. So you need a load, like always. You do the load parent, like always. This, this thing is exactly the same, but now we get the time. We get the time at the, at the start and we get it when we update. That is very important because we need to shake the ground with a frequency. Yeah. So we get the time, which for this, bear in mind that you need to include all this. So in this case, the time it's already in the raw basics, so you don't you don't need to do anything. Then we create the topics, which in this case will be earthquake frequency and magnitude. So we publish the frequency and the magnitude in different topics and we can change those variables. Yeah. So now we check for the ROS node, for ROS. Is it the ROS score running? Yeah, perfect. Then we initialize the ROS node and then we initialize the subscribers for those two uh, topics, which essentially is you create this subscriber of type std um, float 32. If it was another type, you should put here the name of the package and the name of the, the message, uh, the topic message type. Then we have the name of the topic, the queue. Then we have the callback, which we've defined a bit down here. Uh, let me search for it. Yeah, here. So on message, which essentially when it gets this message float, then it sets this frequency. And this frequency, it sets this variable, which is this x-axis frequency to the va value that it, it gets from the topic. And this variable is initialized here with value one. And that's it. And then it's used for the movement that we'll see in a minute. So 
once we have this we then start the queue thread yeah and we call this queue thread a uh, method which is then here and that's quite it actually so in the other one we have to just copy the same stuff so we have to do another callback and we need to do another queue thread and we have to initialize so we initialize the subscriber here the ros queue and the ros queue thread and we do the same thing for the other um, topic yeah so once this is done it's basically done yeah so we have loaded and for this object that will move and will move uh, an object that it's the floor and we say here that we don't we only move in the x-axis but in the future we could move it in three dimensions and rotation also okay so the on update this is based on the push as you can see is the same code just that it's more complex but it's exactly the same so we have here we get the time now we make we see the difference between the time before the old time the last time that we changed directions and now and we see the delta and if the delta is bigger than max delta which is based on the frequency yeah then we change direction so if the frequency is higher then the period is lower so we change it more often yeah and also if delta is not zero because if it's frequency zero it, it shouldn't oscillate so it makes no sense changing the direction and then we have uh, the speed so we set the speed based on the magnitude speed which is again set by the callbacks and the direction so positive or negative and then we set the velocities linears and the angular to zero so we don't want any speed set yeah okay so we set the speed and that's it and based on that we can make an earthquake simulator more or less yeah so we'll see a demo in a minute just say okay what are we moving to simulate this well we go to earthquake world and essentially what we have is the same thing so it's not underground but then we do a custom ground plane which is essentially a box just above the ground plane this will make it that it can't move around and uh, rotate so it only can move in the plane otherwise if it's floating around it moves just because uh, setting the speed to zero doesn't mean it doesn't move just that you set the, the forces you don't make any forces there's no control there so we go here we make this box that has very high friction so that things get stuck and move around otherwise it's like moving a piece of ice and the dimensions the material which we do it green and this is important the inertia so that the objects that are on top don't, don't rotate or move it in any way because it has very high inertia so if you put higher the mass the better just be careful that it doesn't go past the floor okay so and at the end we put our marvelous plugin yeah so here the plugin gets the plane box yeah the custom ground plane box and then we put a box just above and for the final touch in the launch file we pause it to true so that it doesn't um, start moving already yeah so we compile it and let's launch it and see how it goes ROS launch uh, TC main earthquake we launch it
Okay, loaded model plugin, blah, blah, blah. Then we go here, visible. There we go. So now we have plane and a box. We can put object around here. Yep. And we hit plane. There we go. So it has a frequency of by default of one and amplitude one meter. So you see that more or less it moves. And it's, it's not that it moves one meter, but the magnitude is one meter per second. So in theory, it should move one meter. Okay. So yeah, and what's the thing special about it? Well, all the work that we did for Ross now pays off because we can do Ross topic publish earth quake uh, for example frequency and then we put a frequency I don't know double the frequency there you go so it moves twice as fast and you saw that in here we have the changes here okay let's change to something like I don't know so it moves super fast okay now we change it back, back to one now we do ROS topic publish earthquake magnitude and let's put double now it moves more much more and if for example we we put, uh, I don't know, like very crazy, like three. That would be a very big earthquake. We can put other objects around. There we go. As you can see, this box is, is not the same and it doesn't have the same properties as the other default objects here that's why it they don't move in the same way for example let's just for the laughs let's put the frequency like really fast frequency there we go <laughs> and now a very crazy like magnitude of the i don't know 30 no, like 10 there we go and yeah so that's quite it so if you like the video please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel because we publish videos every day so thank you and see you in the next video hasta la próxima